again, my name is Lisa and I'm part of the customer success department. And we're gonna go over um, the owner access portal from the owner perspective. So the agenda for today is we're gonna discuss the advantages of using the TOPS1 owner portal. Um, I'll also go over features, um, how they access the portal and sign in, the functionality of the portal, and at the end, I'll do a live demonstration so you can see exactly what your homeowners will see when they get that first email to log in. So some of the advantages here would, um, it'll save time by providing a central location for the owners to make payments. Um, they'll be able to do that as a, if you set up on Tom's Pay, they can do a one-time payment or set up an auto pay. It does provide them with real-time access to information regarding their property and their community. And it does answer a lot of those uh, frequently asked questions that they would call your office for. They'll be able to find the answers themselves right on the portal. They can also um, update their personal information, such as like a phone number. They can update their email address. They can change their password themselves. They can um, view the, their account history and also their payment history. You can also attach things to a document library. There's um, documents that are specific to the homeowner and then there's community documents and they're in two separate places on the, on the owner portal. And then again, the owners can make payments. Um, however, you have that set up for online or enroll in TOPS Pay for their automatic payments. So I, it begins, of course, with you sending out the registration emails, and this is the page, um, how it would look in your system. Um, when you select all, you also want to filter and get only the people that have email addresses or it will um, give you an error. So select to send the emails to the, all the unregistered owners with an email, you just click select all. And then if you wanna do an individual one, you can simply um, go over here and send the invite to an individual owner. Um, so then what do the owners have to do after that? Well, they'll get an owner access, um, an email that says register for their owner access and it looks like this. And they do need to be on Google Chrome, just like you are on Google Chrome when you use TOPS1. They would need to use um, Google Chrome and then they would simply click on the register for owner access on the email they receive. And it takes them directly to your website. I have a lovely bird there as my icon. And um, it would already say their name and their email address in the middle. And so at this point, they would just put in their password. It needs to be at least eight characters. Their username defaults um, as their email address. So once they enter their password and confirm their password, they are redirected to then log into their account. So this would have be their email address and the password they select. If they have any problems, they can click on the need help. Um, if they have trouble doing this, you can also enroll for them on your system if they call you and they have any problems. Then once they get into the owner portal, this is the landing page they would see. Um, it does have any account balance it's showing. If they had any open items, they would also um, alert them right here. But if you click the little sandwich lines in the left-hand upper corner, it does give you the other options within the owner portal. And this one for Jenny Becker would show um, the top of the line is any open items. Of course, that's a zero on this one. And then you can choose from account history, account settings, payment history, the document library, or log off. So the first option is the account history. So if you click on account history, then it opens up and it shows you the history that's in there of any um, of the fees that were assessed or the payments that were in there and you'll be able to look at the history. If you go to account settings, they are able to add like, for example, this one has no phone number. They would be able to add their phone number, um, update their password. If they have a different primary mailing address, 
Um, so you have people that only live in your community part of the year or they rent it out. So they have the property address, but then their primary mailing address is a separate address. They would be able to update it or add it here. And then they would save any changes they make. And then this one is the payment history. So this would show any of the payment history that's on here and also has the option of the green bar over there to pay now if they'd like to make a payment. And this would be where the document library is. Um, currently, there's no documents on this one. The one document on the community is right now just a picture that I attached to see how it worked. So it does work fine. Um, and then they would be able to um, select those. So if you wanted them to have a copy of something that goes out to your whole community, you can attach it here so they would have access to it. And now I'm going to do the live demonstration. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to show you how you would invite um, a single owner. So I'm on Brooke Berry's primary owner page and I could send her the registration email from here and just click send registration email and it would send it to this one homeowner. So for example, once you're set up, if you have a, a resale in your community and you have a new owner and you wanna just register the one owner, you can do it this way, <clears throat> excuse me, right through her, um, her own owner page. <clears throat> or if you're doing it for the first time and you have a lot, to, you can do it this way through the community page and down here on the right where it says owner access, you click manage. And this is what I talked about in the beginning where you'd want to filter for only the owners that have emails if you're sending out the owners. Otherwise you'll get an error if you try to send it to people without emails. The other thing you can also do with this is sort out all your owners without emails and then download this to Excel, and then you'll have a nice Excel spreadsheet that'll let you know which owners you do need to get emails for. So you can have those. Now, I'm just gonna leave it at all owners because I'm gonna just send the um, one to Brooke Perry here. So I'm just gonna send her an invite. It'll take me to the screen. This shows me what will be on the email. Basically, it's just the welcome to the community and all the other information. So once I do this, I can generate it and review it. And then once I see who it's in here, it's only to Brooke. That's what I want to send to her, the owner registration. Then I simply click send all. And the email has been sent to her. So then I'll go to my email box for Brooke and see if we get our email. Oh, and there it is. It's already arrived. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the email. And it looks just like it did in the PowerPoint. This is the name of my community, Lisa Land, named after myself, of course. It's my sample community. And then I'm just gonna register for owner access. And it took me right to the page where again, Brooke Berry, her email address is right here. This tells me I'm registering for the account. So all I'm doing is putting in a password that is at least eight digits. And then I'm gonna click register. And see, it takes me to the return to the login screen. I'm gonna put my email address in here and my password. And then I'm logged in as Brooke Berry. There's her address. This is her current balance. I can pay it now if I want. I can click on this arrow down for the account balance and it shows me what's in the balance. So late fee, interest charge, assessments. Um, this is when everything was billed to her, the batch number. And there's no other open items. And again, back to the sandwich in the corner, gives me the account history. 
Again, these will each open to give you more information. The account settings. So if I wanted to update every, anything in here, I could. Um, payment history. And back to the document library, which there's none in there. And the one document in here, it shows the date it was put on and what the name of it. And that's that's pretty much everything that you get in the owner portal. Um, you do have the ability on you know things you want your owners to be able to see and do in your portal. So this is with everything activated. I have a question to looks like to show the um, how we do the mass invitation again. So I will go all over that one more time. Hang on just a second. Let me pull that up. So do the mass registration to get them all. So this little uh, box on your homepage for your community shows you how many unregistered homeowners there are, how many have been uninvited and aren't registered. And then this is active. So those were the three that I've done. Nobody's temporarily active. The temporarily active is when they can't, they have trouble enrolling or saying they don't get the email from you and you go in and activate them, um, it sends them a temporary password and they have 24 hours to update that password. And so they would appear in this temporarily active section until they made their permanent password. So then again, I'm back here. It shows me all the people in my community, the unregistered, if I had invited one and so Brooke Berry would have been in here before we went and um, enrolled her. And then these are the three active. There's nobody that's out there that's invited that hasn't registered. This is all my unregistered. And this is everybody all together. And so I can select name and then I can filter. So if I just wanna get all of the unregistered that have emails, then I can filter it this way and then get them all here. So this is all my owners that are unregistered with emails and I can send an individual invitation or I can select all and see how the actions up here change to 14. So then we're gonna send the emails to all of them. Send owner access invite to 14. And then here it'll take you to the message again to double check it. Uh, once you click on generate and review, then it shows me my message is being prepared by my success message at the bottom. And then it gives me the list of all of the owners that are gonna be included in this email. Of course, they'll all get their an individual email. And it tells me it has not been sent yet. So if I need to edit anything or take anybody out or do anything different, I can. I can see the full message, which is right here. And then if I was ready to do this, then I would simply click on send all and it would send all these emails to everybody. Okay, I do see somebody asked if they have to use Chrome to register. Yes, they do. They need to be on Chrome just like um, any user of TOPS1 needs to be on Chrome. It's the, um, it, it syncs best with the system if you do it from Chrome. You go back to the page or if you forgot your password, hold on just a moment. Okay, go back here to, we log off. Put the email in here and click forgot password. It's going to have me put the email address in. And then it'll send me an email to recover my password and reset it. 
So here's my reset my password link right here. So it just sent me another email to reset my password. Click on the link in there and it takes you right back here to reset your password. I just want to thank everybody for joining us today and hopefully this answers all your questions about owner portal access.